what's going on guys switch brew here and we're back with another video so in this video what i'm going to be showing you how to do is how to update to the new 18.00 custom firmware now if you guys are on 17.01 for example or 17.00 or even as low as 16.0.3 i don't recommend updating as of yet due to everything not being supported so for example, I don't think Mission Control's been updated yet, and I'm not too sure if Tesla menu's working. Apparently, themes are working. Um, basically, this video really is to get you out of a sticky situation if you did update to the 18.0.0 firmware, and you now need to get custom firmware running back on your Nintendo Switch console. So, first thing I'm going to do is head over to Settings. And once we're in settings, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to system. And as you can see here, we are on the current system version of 17.0.1. So before we actually start, what I'm going to do is head over to the main screen and head over to the homebrew menu. And once we're in the homebrew menu, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll across to NX themes. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is uninstall the current theme. I like to do this before upgrading the firmware to prevent any errors. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go down to uninstall theme. I'm going to click uninstall the current theme. I'm then going to go ahead and press yes. Once that's done, what we're going to do is go ahead and press OK. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and scroll down to the reboot section. And once we're at the reboot section, what we're going to do is go ahead and press the reboot button. And then what I'll do is load up my Switch console again just to show you guys that the theme has been removed. So as you can see, we're now back on the Nintendo Switch console. And you can see that the theme has been removed. And what I'm going to do is head over to settings. And then what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to scroll down to system. And as you can see, we're still on the 17.0.1 custom firmware. However, the theme has been removed, ready to update the custom firmware to 18.0.0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the computer. We're going to get the files together, etc. We're going to copy them onto the SD card, and then we're going to get on with updating the actual console itself. So bear with me, people, while I switch over to the PC. Peace. So, guys, as you can see, we're now over on the computer. And what I've done is I have put all the 18.0.0 update files into a folder. Now, I know you guys have been struggling with downloading files from the Discord server. So what I'm going to start doing from now on is putting the files back into the video description. Now these 18.0.0 update files are all source, sourced sorry, from the irrelevant githubs and what I've done is I've made this a bit easier for you guys. So what I've done is automatically I've added into the atmosphere folder the SIG patches so you guys don't need to do anything. If I go back and back again and go into the Hecate folder here, as you can see you've got bootloader and you've got the Hecate underscore CTCAER underscore 6.1.1.bin now if you are on a patch console and you've got a mod chip in your switch what you'll want to do is rename this file to payload.bin however if you've got a v1 console what you can do is just drag this somewhere onto your desktop or into a specific folder and this is the file that you're going to use on tegra uh, rcm to inject the payload so what I'm going to do, because I've got a patch console, I'm going to go ahead and click rename. And I'm just going to rename this to payload.bin. Um, in the bootloader folder, what I've done is I've added the relevant uh, patches.ini file sorry for the SIG patches. And if I go into payloads, you've got the fusey.bin in there. And if you use lockpick for example i've also put the lockpick underscore rcm dot bid in there so this is pretty much all ready to go so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to transfer this onto the switch console so if i close out of this what i've done is i've already plugged my switch in via a usb c cable i am in hecate at the moment and i've got this mounted by the 
um, SD card mounting section in Hecate. So if I go over to Fire Explorer and scroll down, as you can see here, we have Switch SD. So what we're gonna want to do is go ahead and open the 18.0.0 update files. And we're gonna bring these up here and we'll bring this down here. So the first thing we want to do is in our or on our switches SD card to stop any errors or prevent any errors from like, for example, if you use mission control, which allows you to um, connect third party controllers to your switch, such as Xbox or PlayStation. Um, basically that at the moment, as far as I'm aware, that is out of date. So by renaming these folders prior to updating, this is going to stop any system crashes or any errors. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to rename the atmosphere folder to old atmosphere. So all you need to do is go ahead and click rename you have to go to the front of the text and you just want to type in old. And again, you want to scroll down until you find bootloader which is here. And again, what you want to do is right click, show more options, rename, or you can go ahead and press F2. It's up to you guys and go ahead and call this old bootloader. So the next thing I'm gonna do before copying any files in my old bootloader folder, which was obviously originally called bootloader. If I go into here and go to res, I have got a couple of files in here that I want to back up. And basically what these are is um, custom icons and a custom background for Hecate. So because obviously I've called this old bootloader and we're going to overwrite it with a new bootloader folder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back up these icons. So the icons that I want to back up are my stock icon, my payload icon, my lockpick icon, my Android icon and the Hecate background icon. So I'm just going to move this out of the way quickly. And I've created a folder at the side here called Hecate IPL and icons backup folder basically first of all i'm going to drag these icons in to here so they're now backed up what i'm then going to do is i'm going to go back and because like i said the new bootloader is going to overwrite this folder and these files are going to be missing i'm also going to back up my hecate underscore ipl dot ini file now if you guys don't know what this does i would consider it uh, i would consider backing it up sorry Basically what this does is when you load up your switch into Hecate and you go ahead and press the launch button, you might have some options in there. If you do not have this file in the new bootloader folder that you're going to put onto your console, basically when you go to launch, you're just going to have a message at the top what says no boot entries found. So you want to go ahead and back up this file. Once I've done that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back to the root of the SD card. And this is where we're going to start copying the files across. So first things first, what I'm going to do is go into the atmosphere folder in the update files and we're going to copy these three, uh, sorry, these two folders and this NRO file across. And we're just going to drop this in here. If it comes up with a message saying, do you want to replace anything? Just go ahead and press replace the files in the destination. What you can then do is go back in the update files and you can head over to the Hecate folder. Then what you want to do is go ahead and drag the bootloader folder and the payload.bin across. And as specified earlier, if you've got a patch console, you'll want to rename the Hecate file to payload.bin. If you've got a V1 console and you're using Tegra RCM to eject, you don't have to rename it. You just need to place it on your desktop. And this is the file that you need to browse for to inject the Hecate payload. So I'm just going to go ahead and press replace the file destination. You then want to go back. And you want to go ahead and drag the actual 18.0.0 update files across to the root of your SD card. Once that's done, what you want to do is let that copy across. And then what we're going to do is once this is copied, we can eject the USB from the device safely. And we can go ahead and attempt to boot into custom firmware. But prior to doing that, if you are using the USB tools to mount your SD card within Hecate. Once you come out and back to the main screen of Hecate, at the bottom you'll see a little button that says reload. You just want to go ahead and click that and that's basically going to refresh um, the version of Hecate as you've just installed a newer version. So what I'm going to do is close out of the update files because they're all on the console now. I'm going to close out of the SD card. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the computer and press the up arrow. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go ahead and press eject UMS. 
and as you can see that has removed the usb safely so what we're going to do now is i'm going to take out the usb as stated obviously you're not going to be able to see this but i'm going to click close on the screen and go back to the main screen of hecate which is the home page where you can see the launch button more configs payloads emu mmc uh, you then want to go ahead and press the reload button at the bottom and you want to go ahead and press reload and what this is going to do is it's going to refresh hecate and you should see in the top left hand corner once refreshed uh hecate version 6.1.1 and that's how you know you've done it right. You may get a screen pop up where you need to set the date and time. Just go ahead and do that and press OK. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to set the date and time and everything. I'm going to dock my switch and we're going to switch back over onto the switch screen once I've rebooted into custom firmware. So I'll see you guys in a second. So guys, just before we boot into custom firmware, I've basically missed a little step out. I said earlier that obviously I backed up the Hecate IPL file and this is basically the settings for your launch menu on your Nintendo Switch within Hecate and I obviously also backed up all them custom icons and I've obviously forgot to put them back onto the console. So what I'm going to do is head over to the bootloader folder and you want to first of all if I open this backup folder that I made you can see here you've got the custom icons and the Hecate IPL file so the Hecate IPL file goes into the root of the bootloader folder if it asks you to replace it just go ahead and press replace and the custom icons what I've got so the background and the four icons they go into the res folder so what I'm going to do is open up res and I'm going to highlight the background BMP and all these logos here and then I'm going to drag these into the res folder. If it asks you to replace any of the file destinations, go ahead and press replace. And they're going to copy across. So once again, I'm going to close out of this, close out of this. And I'm going to eject the USB from my computer. I'm then again going to go back to the heck at a uh, homepage and go ahead and press the reload button at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and press reload. And there we go. And Hecate is now booted up with my custom background. And if I go into launch, I can also see all my uh, custom icons. So what I'm going to do now, like I said, is I'm going to boot into custom firmware. And hopefully we'll get into atmosphere. Once we're into atmosphere, if I get any errors, I'll let you guys know. But it shouldn't be an issue. As you know, we renamed the bootloader folder and the atmosphere folder to old bootloader and old atmosphere before replacing it with the um, new atmosphere files and the uh, new bootloader. So what I'm going to do now is boot into custom firmware. I'm going to dock my switch and we'll carry on with the update once I get back onto the console. Peace. So as you can see, we're now back over on the Nintendo Switch console. If I go ahead and head over to the settings section and we're going to scroll down to system as you can see we're currently on 17.0.1 still however we now need to run daybreak and select the update files and go ahead and update the actual firmware so if we head back over to the uh, main screen and what you want to do is go ahead and head over to the albums folder and click A. Once we're in albums, you want to scroll across to daybreak. Once we're in daybreak, you then want to go ahead and press the install button. Once we're in the directory section, you want to choose the 18.0.0 files. And what this is going to do now is it's going to validate the update. It might take a few seconds. And once it's done, you should be able to click continue and you should see the message update is valid. So we're going to go ahead and press the continue button. Once you get to here, you'll see a thing what says select settings mode. You just want to go ahead and press A on preserve settings. And when you see the driver variant, you want to go ahead and press the install FAT32 plus XFAT. So we're just going to go ahead and press A on that now. It's going to say ready to begin update installation. Do you want to continue? You just want to go ahead and press continue. 
and what this is going to do now is a start applying the actual update so this may take a few minutes or a few seconds depending on how big the actual update is as you can still see it's at zero percent completed so it may take a while i'm not too sure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to speed up this part of the video and get back to you once it's complete so guys once it's completed uh, you're going to have two options at the bottom you've got shut down and reboot now personally i like to press the shutdown button and obviously undock the switch and manually restart it so what i'm going to do is go ahead and press the shutdown button i'm then going to boot back into custom firmware via hecate and we're going to see if the update has been applied successfully so i'm going to go ahead and press the shutdown button now so guys as you can see we're now back on the nintendo switch home screen so basically once i'd shut down the console what i did is undock the switch like i said i were going to do powered it on got back to the heck at it menu click the launch button click custom firmware and here we are no errors no problems at all and we're now back on the nintendo switch console so what we're going to do is head over to settings and click the a button once we're in the system settings what you want to do is scroll down to system and as you can see we're now on the 18.0.0 1.7 custom firmware so yeah guys that is pretty much it for this video that is how to update to the new 18.0.0 custom firmware as i stated earlier if you're on 17 or 17.1 or you're even as low as 16.0.3 you could update 16.0.3 to 17.0.1 but i wouldn't recommend going to 18 as of yet as i don't know what is working and what isn't so what i'm going to do after this video is i'm going to check out what's working and what isn't and i'm going to make another video to let you guys know just a quick one before I leave, um, I didn't mention earlier that when I was uh, going through the files before putting them onto the Switch console, I have also created the hosts folder in the atmosphere folder for blocking the Nintendo servers on Emu MMMC. If you guys don't have an Emu MMMC by now, which you should really, as you shouldn't be using custom firmware on your SysNand, you may have to set this up yourself. But if you have got an emu mmc i've already put the hosts folder and the emu mmmc.txt file in there to block the nintendo servers so yeah guys thanks for watching the video make sure you like comment and subscribe i'll see you in the next one peace out